Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. I am Patrick. This is Storytelling Imperfectly, and welcome to the channel. And especially if you're new to the channel, welcome. I am Patrick, and I hope you like what you see. Uh, again, we're going to delve into a missing persons case today on Storytelling Imperfectly. And this case particularly is also equally strange on par with the Dennis Martin case and many other cases that I've talked about. But uh, I, I just don't... This particular case, as far as what happened to Thomas James Carleton, uh, is surely to leave you scratching your head. But let's see if we can't put our noggins together. Sit back and relax. It's story time. Back in 1993, on October the 9th, Thomas James Carleton uh, decided to go for a hike. Now, this was not abnormal at all. In fact, this was just par for the course with Mr. Carleton. Um, uh, Thomas was a psychologist, a very smart guy, and um, at 44 years old, he was also a devoted husband to his wife, Dia, and he had a four-year-old daughter named Ashley. He worked as a psychologist for the New York Department, uh, Department of Corrections for the state of New York prison system. Uh, but how he blew off steam, because, man, you talk about a stressful job. I mean, dealing with people who have mental illness is a difficult job to begin with. Dealing with the dredge of Western decay in the New York prison system and people who have mental illness on top of being criminals, uh, particularly, I imagine, could be a quite stressful job. So, in, in to, to how did uh, Thomas Carleton get his stress out? He hiked. He, he loved nature. He hiked. He camped. In fact, he was a member of the Adirondack Mountain Hiking Club. It was like a, a hiking, going out and hiking, mountain climbing club. Um, he was also like a member of the Civil Air Patrol. I mean, this dude was a pretty stable guy. Like, again, he's college educated. He's got a very good job. Um, and... Uh, Nothing odd. So on October the 9th, uh, when he told his wife, I'm going to go hike and actually camp up on Mount Marcy for the weekend and just kind of get out in the nature and, and relax, she was like, sure, no problem, Tom. And uh, Thomas, Thomas Carleton got into his vehicle. Um, he didn't take a tent with him, even though he was planning to stay overnight. Uh, but that's because where he was going was Mount Marcy. And to hike Mount Marcy, there are many stops and many different trails in which there are shelters, like state-provided shelters, and a lean-to, or a, you know something like that. So it wasn't like he didn't have a place to stay, so g taking a tent wasn't necessary. And he had even told his wife his plans were to stay in the lean-tos that were provided by the uh, park system at Mount Marcy. Um, they know that he drove his car there and arrived about 9 in the morning and took off off the trail. Um, this, this would be the last you know his wife would ever see of him. And, and this is, of course, where the mystery begins, guys. Um, a few days later, he hadn't returned home. His wife then uh, let the authorities know, the sheriff's department. Now, because uh, Thomas was a, a member uh, working in the community of the uh, law enforcement, they all kind of knew him around that area. I mean, he obviously had a good reputation and good standing within the, the law enforcement community. So when they heard that Thomas Carleton had gone, you know, gone missing up on Mount Marcy, it kicked off a huge search. I mean, a massive search for this guy. Um, hundreds of volunteers came in, multiple agencies, guys. They had state police, uh, park rangers, all, all of that. And from the 12th to the 16th, they just kind of fanned out and started looking for Thomas. They did go up the trails, like state main train trails, that he would have gone on himself. And at two particular stops along the way, if you've ever been hiking uh, in a state-maintained park like this and whatnot, on the trail, there's usually trail books, like log books, and you can actually sign your name in, which is a really smart thing to do if you're passing through an area or hiking out in the wilderness in, on a state-maintaining trail like this. Because it, what it does is it lets people know you were there. Uh, as well as just being neat to leave your you know, name. Because when you're hiking and you really get outdoors, you become uh, kind of like a, I don't know what to say, a professional hiker, but certainly a avid hiker, a person who does it on a regular basis, you even pick up like trail names like Backwards Bob or, you know, Padfoot, you know, all these things. So, you know, 
they they checked the log books and yes he had actually stopped in at two um of such uh of lean tos that they know of but more importantly they also saw, saw the names of other people that were there around the same time that he was by their signatures in the log books so i gave them a reference point to where they could go and talk to some people to say hey have you seen this guy now when thomas left his home he took a sleeping bag with him, food, water, all that stuff. He also took a blue or a teal backpack. So he was wearing a teal colored backpack. Um, and, but he was prepared. I mean, he was prepared to stay a few, few days out in the woods, basically trail camping, not off woods, not crazy. Now, although Thomas was known to kind of go off trail, Thomas was known to head into the wild. So, right, he's kind of an off-trail guy sometimes, too, when he hiked. And this was also well-known. Now, something that should be known about Mount Marcy, guys, is that a lot, a lot, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, have gone missing around and near Mount Marcy. This is a fact. Now, chalk it up to serial killers, chalk it up to people just getting lost, chalk it up to animal predation, or even something more mysterious. It's just the facts that a lot of people have gone missing up there. So now, in the, on October the 16th, remember, he left home on the 9th. He was reported missing on the 12th. The search was kicked off. And while they're having this massive search for Thomas, uh, they bring in canine units at this point in time. Now, guys, they're using helicopters, canine units now. And there was a particular bloodhound uh, that they brought that was one of the best in the world at finding people. You know, that's what it did. It was trained. It was one of the best bloodhounds you could uh, have in the country and three times this dog attempted to pick up mr carleton's scent thomas's scent and succeeded he would follow it for a mile or mile and a half it did depend you know where they found the trail where he picked it up at but generally the same distance it led to the same spot and then the dog would turn back and the hikers uh, the the searchers would have to turn back because the land got so rugged that they couldn't car carry on not with the dog particularly and even though the, the searchers themselves, they even brought in guys, part of the search, part of the search crew, were actually Adirondack specialist search and rescue guys. Guys who, who are specifically trained for searching people in the Adirondack Mountains, which is where Mount Marcy lies, you know, in that chain of mountains, the Adirondacks. And they, it's just too rugged, like they couldn't do it. So they're flying over it, they went off road. This search for Thomas Carleton, guys, um, spanned a hundred square miles, all right? And they searched 256 miles of maintained trails, state maintained trails that he could have potentially went down, and also hundreds of miles of off-road, of just going off trail and find, following game trails, deer tracks, whatever, you know, just looking for this guy and no sign of him whatsoever. Now, in the logbook, when they, when they checked the logbooks and they saw that there were people at these lean-tos at the same time that Thomas was, they did go and find them, and they talked to them. Out of the people that they talked, two particular hikers who were hiking together did see Thomas. They interacted with him, and they remember it because of the teal backpack. They even brought it up. Said, oh, yeah, yeah that, that was the guy wearing the teal backpack, and they had spoken with him, and he actually said that he was going to continue on on a trail called the Indian Pass. Now, the temperature had dropped at the, at, during this search, and they had even gotten snow up on the Indian Pass. Remember, Mount Marshy's up in elevation, so if it's raining down below, it very well may be snowing up in the mountains. You know, you go up in elevation, it gets colder. Uh, still, as they searched the Indian Pass, they focused on that area since they were directed that that's where Thomas, according to these other hikers who had spoken with him, said that he had gone. No sign of him. They searched high and low, everywhere they could, and no sign of Thomas James Carleton. To this day, guys, absolutely zero evidence has ever been found in any way about what happened to him. They've never found any articles of clothing. They've never found a body. They've never found anything. And again, his scent, when the dogs were initially brought in, and, and this bloodhound for th three different attempts, guys, three attempts, this dog trailed him to where the terrain got so rugged that men and animals couldn't do it. So if Thomas went that way, um, being a, a, you know, a professional hiker, or at least an avid hiker, something he did on a regular basis, even if he went extreme hiking and went extreme off-road, 
why. He wasn't prepared for that. He even told his wife what he was going to be doing. So, you know, that begs then the question of what happened to Thomas James Carleton. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it, guys. Leave me something in the comment section below. It is a real head scratcher. Of course, you can look all these cases up yourself, and I, I ask you to, if you care more to, to know more details or try to put it together yourself. These kind of cases fascinate me, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Generally speaking, it's hard to like videos about people that have gone missing, and, and uh, my heart always goes out to their families. Uh, I wish them nothing but the best, and I hope that one day they get closure and find out what happened to Thomas. I mean, leaving behind his wife and a four-year-old daughter, I don't know, you know. Uh, but I'd love to hear what your opinion on it. So leave me something in the comment section below. If you've been here this long and you're not subscribed, I surely hope you'll push in that old red button down there and uh, keep coming back and hanging out with me. But whether you're an old subscriber or a new subscriber, do me a favor. Click the bell, guys. Get the notifications and keep coming back. Don't let the algorithm decide what you watch. Take destiny into your own hands. Click that bell. That way you can choose to watch my next video or choose not to, but it's your choice and that's super important. And last but not least to all of you that are supporting the channel and keep coming back and listening to these stories and have been so kind and, and uh, just, I can't thank you enough. It, it means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A million times thank you. But guys, that's it for me today. I am out of here. Uh, take care of yourself, be safe. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.